From the Walter E. Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C., this is the ASN Kidney Week 2019 podcast, a discussion of the latest scientific and clinical advances presented at this year's meeting. Dr. Shaw, uh, Dr. Kent, uh, Dr. Weiner, uh, welcome to this podcast. Uh, I'd love to hear about your thoughts on um, ASN Kidney Week 2019 in Washington, D.C. Tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are. Uh, I think it was a great experience. For, it has been a great experience for me so far. And one of the big highlights for me this year was um, they had a lot of emphasis on women's health and kidney disease. They had, they had like a separate abstract category included, and this was the first time they did that with great oral presentations. Today I attended some of the, um, some of the presentations on preeclampsia and its impact on cardiovascular outcomes and actually acute kidney injury in pregnancy, which again is very un, uh, unrecognized. And it, there was an excellent presentation which was given by Dr. Brewster. And one of the other uh, great presentations was by Dr. Reynolds, who is from UNC. And she had a poster on like contraceptive use in women uh, who have glomerulonephritis. And again, this is a very understudied area. So those, uh, those were, uh, some of the big highlights for me uh, in this meeting. Hey, thank you, Dr. Ken. Well, um, being a first year fellow, um, I don't have much liberty to come in early. <laughs> so th actually this was my first day at it, um, given I was on night floor for the whole week. So I got in this morning. Um, I think one of the things that I've enjoyed now is that ASN is um, embracing a lot of free open access uh, medical education. I think uh, it's the step in the right direction. Um, I've realized that in the end, there's a lot of medical information out there um, which we can grasp or even assimilate. So um, in many ways, um, free open access medical education can sieve out all the stuff that you don't really need to hear about and, and you know, completely cut straight to the chase about what you really need to know about um, as a, say, a, even a young fellow uh, who's just starting off trying to make sense of the world of nephrology. So um, I think it's a step in the right direction and um, definitely opens up a lot of learning opportunities and uh, bring back a lot of interest back into nephrology. Dr. Weiner? And, and for me, I, I, for me, I think it's really that we've been in Washington, D.C., and you can see that policy is actually coming into every aspect of this meeting. We had a talk on disruptors this morning um, from Dean Kamen and Bruce Colton at CVS. All these different changes that are going on in terms of physician payment that we've seen. And I think the, the key thing that I've really taken home is that it's not going to be business as usual anymore. We are ready for a paradigm change and every stakeholder in this field has recognized that we need to realign where we're going and the enthusiasm and the energy to do this is just palpable across every day of this meeting. That's great. Um, Sam, did you hear um, Dean Kamen's talk this um, morning? I unfortunately didn't, <laughs> I have to be honest. Uh, but I think um, all the things that Dr. Weiner mentioned, um, I've been reading about it and again, the power of Twitter and how things get passed. Um, you know, been following all these things. so. I think you know one of the things that always um, occurs to me is how does this trickle down to training, and you know because I think that's one of the things that we really need to also address, um, other than policy changes in nephrology. Um, I was wondering if any of you guys had any thoughts on that. I think that is such a huge challenge, and it's not only trickling down to training, mm. but it's even just disseminating to the entire community as well. Mm. Um, it's one thing that has been done very well so far at this meeting, but I was talking to a person after just a few minutes ago who hadn't even heard a whole lot about all of these different policy initiatives that are coming. And it just makes me realize that uh, there's so much more that needs to continue to go on to reach every member of our community in order to say, hey, it, it's, there's change going on here and how to best engage with this change. I think one of the points that Dean Kamen made in his presentation is, you know, the difference between technology and innovation and how we needed people to embrace the technology and that really was innovation. I was really moved by that and some of the things he's developed for like, uh, you know, kids from all countries. He had a big event, you know, a week ago in Dubai. 191 countries participated in this competition for science and technology. And the finalists were a team from Israel and a team that didn't have a country. That team was called Hope. 
wow. because they were from a refugee camp in Syria. Yeah. So they didn't have a country, of, and, and they, at the end of it, they hugged each other, uh, you know, as two teams. So it was powerful. He got a standing ovation. That was just And what did these teams make? Uh, just different things, uh, you know, for technology. Okay. That how you can advance things uh, from, you know, robots and you know just oh, wow. little things. These are, uh, you know, high school kids. Wow. Uh, really powerful. So uh, yeah. very, mm. very impressive. Yeah, it so. showed the power yeah. of just yeah. bringing people together yeah. and the fact that even if it, it seems like there should be non-cooperation that people yeah. can just come together and, and unite for yeah. the same purposes no matter who you are or where you are. I mean, it, it's a tremendous lesson for everywhere, I, I think, that he tried to provide for us this morning. Yeah. Yeah. He has over 440 patents, and uh, right from the Segway to home dialysis and the peritoneal dialysis machines and so on. And now that he's working with Bruce Culleton, you know, with CVS Pharmacy, I think, and his talk was, you know, next after uh, um, Dean Kamen, and then Todd finished it with how the ASN is committed to, you know, increasing funding for research, driving innovation, and really keeping the patient first in terms of what can we do for patients uh, with uh, advancing their, you know, kidney health. So I think the buzz at this meeting has been the highest. I've been attending ASN since 1992. I have never seen this much buzz, and, you know, literally I get goosebumps, and just seeing the uh, excitement in nephrology, so. Yeah. And coming in as the yeah. president-elect, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot coming in the next no, year. No, it's exciting. I th yeah. You know, we work as a team. Yeah. You know, you're the president or president-elect, but yeah. we have a great team of leaders, and it's everybody, all the committees and the various uh, communities and so on. You know, ASN is a big family, and I think, you know, we are representing that team, and I think it's the, the teamwork that's really key, uh, so. And it's just it's remarkable, all the stakeholders. I mean, you can see, I mean, this finally attention in this field, once again, from pharmaceuticals, from device makers, from care providers. And, and it's just, it, it's a really cool time right now. There's there's stuff going on, and, and it's finally, it's, it's as if we've been kind of walking in jello for a decade, and we're now finally able to get moving again. Dr. Shah, any further comments? Well, there was a lecture by the NIH director today, Dr. Francis Collins, and his daughter was here too, Dr. Margaret Collins, who is a nephrologist, and I think um, it was amazing. He did talk about challenges which are faced by women in academic medicine and in, in, in science, and his daughter shared her journey, but I think that was a great event, um, and, and thank you to American Society of Nephrology for its support. And they ended the event by a musical, um, a small musical show, like they are, they, you know, they, he's good at playing guitar and his daughter is a good singer. So that was the highlight. That's great. He yeah. loves to do that. And uh, I was really glad that the women in nephrology were able to get him, uh, right. you know, despite his hectic schedule, yeah. to have him come and do that event. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sorry I missed that event, but it must have been a sellout crowd. Yeah, it was amazing. For that, yeah. So, great. You know, and one other theme for me has been is that I think we're finally seeing activation here. Um, we're talking a lot more about patient activation and patient-centeredness and how they, how the patient and the patient's family can be involved in their own care. But I think we're also seeing nephrologists reactivate to really <coughs> take back the leadership role in advocating for this patient-centered care and advocating for what's doing right. And, and that's been another thing that's just been pervasive in everything is that um, it's, it's we're back. Yeah, I think the patient voice is really critical. As you know, you know, ASN and NKF uh, were asked to lead the effort for patient awareness as part of the advancing, uh, you know, kidney health in America, and they signed a, you know, an MOU with uh, Secretary Azar on Monday this week. Uh, and that's going to be huge for us to drive patient awareness because they have a powerful voice and, you know, really a uh, big stake in the game here. Uh, we have a grant with Baxter that ASN is working on for the AKI Now project. And we just had a focus group uh, this afternoon and a meeting earlier this morning. Uh, we have a patient from San Francisco who was, uh, went through AKI and uh, really um, an amazing experience of how she had AKI requiring dialysis and went to a dialysis unit and was treated as an ESRD patient and ended up with, you know, complications and but she had recovered kidney function. She did not need to be on dialysis. So 
she's now, you know, uh, uh, doing quite well off dialysis and is a huge patient advocate for AKI and understanding, you know, how AKI should be treated differently, even if you're dialysis requiring AKI. So I think incorporating the voice of the mm -hmm. patient is so very important mm -hmm. in everything that we do. And it's nice to see projects like KPMP, you know, Kidney Precision Medicine, and then Kidney Health Initiative of AS, and they all have patients as you know, really critical participants of those uh, uh, programs. Because so. it's nice, because it's been recognized <coughs> that patient-centered outcomes haven't been studied <coughs> enough in nephrology, so I'm kind of glad to hear that's kind of coming back into focus, yeah. for sure. And it was yeah. remarkable how in uh, Todd Ibrahim's talk today at the plenary session, the people that he called out in that were the leadership at the American Association of Kidney Patients yeah. and Laurie Hartwell from uh, the Renal Support Network, that he's really cited those individuals as, as as inspiration for all that is really happening at this meeting right now. And, and that's, it's, it's kind of a precious thing. Yeah, he called out on Paul Conway, Richard Knight, and Lori Hartwell, you know, mm -hmm. who are very active at uh, AAKP, and, and they have been powerful influences. When we go to Capitol Hill Day for, you know, advocacy and so on, we may say whatever to the, you know, senators and so on, but when a patient says something, it is really moving and I think uh, makes a big difference. And I also heard like great things about Todd Ibrahim's speech, like, you know, everybody was very inspired listening to him. So I, I have, like, I think he did, did a great job with that. Any other closing thoughts? The time is now. <laughs> yeah, I think Mark's uh, presidential yeah. address was uh, really spectacular with, you know, saying the time is now and I think, uh, it is, and we need to make sure we leverage on this, you know, successes of some of the new drugs that have come into the market and in the kidney space and other, uh, obviously the executive order, kidney X, and really drive innovation and so on. So, but thank you all very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Uh, Thanks for having us, Thank sir. you. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology, all rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified healthcare provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast of the American Society of Nephrology.